If you're the government and you're planning for a hemorrhagic H79 avian flu pandemic and you expect at the same time to have a pandemic blood shortage, what do you do? Well, you give a $57 million award to Cellfire for the development of thrombosomes. And here's that contract award. Development of thrombosomes, platelet derivative therapeutic. They don't give you much information in these contracts. Went out on September 19th. Contract award $56,736,155 to Cellfire. And it just so happens this is the kind of contract that contractors love and that budget hawks hate. This is the award of a cost plus fixed fee type contract to Cellfire. That means that Cellfire can't lose money. And whatever they want to spend, basically, the government will cover it. But what does this have to do with H7N9 bird flu? Does it tell you anything in this contract that it has anything to do with it? Well, let's go to Cellfire's webpage. Well, Cellfire, if you can see here, they don't do much on their webpage. I think they don't need to because they target the government. And if you look at their board of directors, you can see why they don't need to have a great presence on the web. But let's see what they say here, that they work with agencies planning the nation's response to a pandemic such as avian influenza. Now this is an old web page, so they've been doing this since even before H7N9 bird flu uh, came about. But let's see why they got a $57 million contract. Well, let's see, what are thrombosomes? What do they do? Well, thrombosomes are a platelet-derived hemostatic agent for the control of non-compressible hemorrhage. That means any sort of bleeding you can't stop with direct pressure. Now what's interesting about their product is it's freeze dried. So it's got a longer shelf life and you can reconstitute it. So you can store up. And that is why the contractor here, and let's see who the specific contractor is. It is the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response. That's why they like this. That's why they like this drug. Now, Cellfire loves this contract because this is still an experimental drug. They get this kind of contract, jump, skip through the process. It, it's just the type of thing you love if you're a, a drug manufacturer. But let's see a little bit more what we learned about Cellfire and these thrombosomes. Again, it's for the control of non-compressible hemorrhage type of hemorrhage you get from H7N9 bird flu. And how do we know that? Well, actually, in May of this year, there's this uh, abstract out, thrombocytopenia, an important presentation of new emerging H7N9 influenza. Well, we actually warned you about this back in May 19 of 2013, hemorrhagic bird flu, H7N9. So what is thrombocytopenia? Well, that's when your blood has too few platelets, mild to serious bleeding can occur. Bleeding can occur inside your body, underneath your skin, or even outside of your skin from the surface. Google images of thrombocytopenia, thrombocytopenia if uh, you want to see some really gross photos. But let's look at the actual cases of H7N9 influenza. And if you look here at these 111 cases in this report, PubMed, thrombocytopenia occurs in 73% of these 111 patients. There's also other blood disorders, lymphocytopenia, a lot of a blood effect here. So what's going on here with H7N9? Well, the first thing that alerted us to us to this issue was uh, that the very early reports out of China were reporting disseminated intravascular coagulation. Uh, occurring in some of the people who have died who had H7N9. Now what's happening there is, is, and this is one of the things that makes H7N9 so nasty, is that the blood starts to clot in people's internal organs. And that clotting inside the internal organs destroys those internal organs. But at the same time, as that blood's clotting, it sucks all the platelets out of the rest of the body. So the rest of your body, the skin, the eyes, and other places, they can start to leak blood. In worst cases, then you've got a lot of blood loss coming through, like an Ebola type situation. Now, I don't think there have any been 
reports of that level of hemorrhagic bleeding occurring with an H7N9 patient. Uh, of course, the Chinese aren't likely to report it because of the type of terror that would spread through the populace. But it's a very nasty, nasty, nasty bird flu. And what makes it even nastier, or even more dangerous, is that it seems that children might have a milder version of it, might be asymptomatic, might not need hospital treatment. But if an adult presents at a hospital with H7N9 bird flu, they have a 100% chance of dying without advanced life support. But even if you do get in the hospital and get advanced life support, ventilator and such, they still have like a 33% chance of dying. And if you look how long these people spend in the hospital before they're released and get off the ventilator, they spend a very long time in the hospital. So the initial wave of any H7N9 pandemic, if it occurs, and we don't think it's likely to occur this year in this country. We think it's a low risk, high impact. But if it occurs quickly, there will be no ventilators available in this country just because they'll be all full of people on them. Uh, the government's already pre uh, prepped a 211 phone system with the National Poison Control Center that will allow you to call 211 where they will actually diagnose you over the phone, tell you to stay at home, and electronically transfer a prescription to your local pharmacy without you ever having to leave your house. Of course, there's no point going to the hospital because they're not going to have space for you. So only the most dire cases of people dying are going to go get into the hospital and those are only the early cases because the hospitals are basically going to be full and that's why we recently reported that FEMA also uh, has a uh, contract out where they're uh, preparing to set up across the country 1,000 locations basically these are hoteling locations uh, for medical personnel a uh, hundred people at a time, sort of field hospitals, if you will. I will have a link to that on our website. If you look through some of our videos, you'll uh, you'll see it. But uh, one thing's for sure: people for cell fire are sitting in the dough at the moment. Uh, hopefully, their product works and is much more than just a uh, group of connected individuals working on an interesting topic. Because uh, if this does work. Man, this is a, a, a really wonderful development, uh, not just for H7N9 bird flu, but for lots of other things. But if it doesn't work, it's a heck of a boondoggle.